Welcome back to Overtly Critical. I'm Ryan. And I'm Corwin. And this week we watched Andre Rublev from 1966, directed by Andre Tarkovsky. What the fuck are you doing here? Hey guys. So, oh. uh, what movie did you watch again? This isn't scripted. What, what wanna, did I do? Want to say that out loud? I hate this. Um, uh, Andre Rublev? Nah, I don't think you did. That's right. <laughs> April Fools! We didn't watch any of it. Welcome back to Overtly Critical. I'm Ryan. I'm Corwin. You know these I'm assholes. Dan. I'm Joey. And uh, <laughs> this week we watched Inhuman Witch, or I'm sorry, Inhuman Witch. Exclamation point. Ex- yeah, indeed. Um, directed by David Cornelius and written by David Cornelius. Starring an auteur, if you will, an auteur, truly. <laughs> Starring Matt Lawman, Michael Peak, Jack Burroughs, Kayla Clark, Jake Robinson, Christopher Hahn, and you know some more people. Joey and I had a little list of our own going on, and uh, he lost the dice roll, so I got to pick one of my films, and it went to Inhuman, which is a story about well, in Inhuman, which a astronaut. For the United States military, you know, I wouldn't, isn't his name American, good old American Joe, I think, as they say in the movie? His name's Joe. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a play on words. He, um, you know, there's an accident, and he was eating a Sloppy Joe sandwich. He, he does a, a fucky-wucky. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, he returns to Earth in his uh, spaceship as it comes back, and he is morphed with his Sloppy Joe sandwich. And he's this weird creature that will grow as it eats people. Hey, Ryan, do you know who else is Sloppy Joe? <laughs> Who? Me. <laughs> During this episode, stay tuned for my other seven funny notes. God. At first I thought the opening was only going to be black and white. It's like all stock footage. I kind of liked it. It was at this point that I realized like I was all into this movie. You know, I'm not going to say it's good, but it's it's so bad. It, it's yeah. not so bad it's good because it's so self-aware. You there's, know? A, there's a little redeemable... Couple redeemable moments in there. They they um, know what they're they know what they're doing here. This is like a bunch of like, I don't know. Like it gets a vibe. Of, it's a bunch of friends making a movie. And they have they have a couple moments of humor that are actually kind of funny. It, you know, if only it was shot well and looked well and sounded well, I might be like, oh, that's like maybe a good comedy to give everyone the vibe. It is making fun of the fifties nuclear B movie type B movie mods. monster films like Godzilla and them and mm-hmm. other things like that. <laughs> when they had uh, American Joe on the screen talking to him, you could actually just they left the sound of time code in and I think they did it as like a sound effect for like a spacey digital screen to, like earth to space sort of thing. And I just found it like really funny when I heard it well you didn't know that they got nominated for an oscar for best sound design hey the intro music was mixed really well so okay say what you will but time the, using time code on purpose is genius oh. dan i think he's fucking with you here oh i don't care <laughs> <laughs> the opening of the movie we uh we were introduced to the president of the united states and there's this guy who's in charge like the space mission i forget his name and then there's dr chang or something yeah just like the whitest guy on earth his he's got a dr. bald chang. head it, um, great. Honestly, I think the Doctor was like my favorite character yeah. in this. He was just He's interesting. Fun. Wait, then, Corwin, your favorite character is the Doctor? Conveniently, uh, oh, no. I think you have a very much enjoyance of the science sci-fi genre. <laughs> Wait a minute. Corwin you... likes sci-fi genre. But yeah, and then there's also like uh, Dr. Chang's assistant, Rick Moranis. <laughs> Not really Rick Moranis. <laughs> Shut but... the fuck up. <laughs> Who the hell is Rick Moranis? We cannot forget about Joe's wife with the pressures of society on the her. Fucking oh my god, the phone call scene. They do that trope where like they say like you have the character say what the other person's saying so that Repeating you can expose it. it, and she just repeats the entire thing the while entire he's line. talking. That is one of the actual funny moments. Of the Every movie. moment with her on screen was like the funniest shit. Where like she starts crying, and they're just like, jeez. Huh, women, am I right? <laughs> I have to be the asshole to keep this on track, I'm sorry. <laughs> so fine. we move on to them deciding, okay, we need to take some action against this thing because it's going to spread across the country in like a day or whatever. They go out to the field to try to like figure out you know, where he is after the, the shuttle and everything. I got to rewind here because speaking of 50s movies, we get the, uh, the kissy car scene. First of all, taking place in like a 2001 <sighs> car. And they look like they're like... 
10? There's like, it's like a 10 year old boy and girl in the car. And doesn't he make some boner joke or something? Yeah, he that said, they like, do. No. Yeah, yeah, I won't be able to stand up for like another 10 minutes. Sorry. Yo, else looks Ooh, 10 years Juan. old. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> you know, this thing's this creature's getting bigger. So we meet like. The military. Yeah, we meet the military, which is, like, one general and his assistant who, like... Drive around in a Jeep, like... Yeah, and... and not a military Jeep, just a Jeep. Right, and this guy always wears sunglasses and always has a cigar in his mouth. Didn't the didn't his assistant have, like, some kind of pin at the beginning that was, yeah, like... Yeah, he had a... Is it a silver cross? How do you... Oh, God, he has a... He has like an iron cross he on. A, yeah, he had an iron right. cross. He's he looks a member like the, of the U.S. military, and he has a, a symbol of German military. So they, they're investigating. They're like, where are we going to find this? They find it at some home where we're introduced to an old man who makes it very clear that he doesn't like to peep on his hot neighbors when they're undressing, and he makes this very clear. Um, Exceedingly clear. Right. You know you know who that character reminded me of? Who? Which, which one do you think it reminds you of? <laughs> what? What <are> <laughs> they had like the military had it trapped in the garage. Yes. I, okay. I don't know what kind of context they were thinking of, but when they had like they were like, yeah, okay, lift that door, and they start doing it. It's like castle chain, moat door sounds like they're unleashing yeah. the beast. <clears throat> There's some clever dialogue in this. Yes. Some clever jokes. This guy's got some talent. Really, the only thing else that happens in the movie is it gets so big that they have to recruit a competitive eater. <laughs> To eat the sloppy Joe. Oh my fucking oh, god, oh, his no, name's Joe. Did you just get that? I just got that. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Oh my god. Dude, it was all American Joe. <laughs> and he got infused with the man witch. It was a play on oh words my this god, whole time really? and you didn't know. <laughs> Joey no. w one of my favorite things to deconstruct in shitty movies like this. So look, there was a lot of good actually good comedy in a couple of scenes i like in the beginning when the president shows up and like maybe it's like his like vice president or assistant and like the first lady they're just like they don't care about anything like they're, they're like, total fucking right idiots. i mean even the president like when they're he's checking up on the space program and when joe gets in his accident he's like keep up the great work the sets look bland and ridiculous yeah. especially that that scene i don't know what they were doing with lighting but there was so much depth of field which is why it looked very unprofessional like, they also just tend to um, shoot them against like just walls. I you you get the impression that the the guy who who made this really doesn't have. I mean, obviously, he doesn't have a lot of experience, but it's pretty clear that he yeah. doesn't. I don't know if he like. If you go and make a movie, you went and made a movie. Yes. It's like well done. This is this was fully entertaining. This was not a this is not a bad experience to watch. That I, I mean, we're making fun of it, but like it genuinely was like a fun time. But a lot of the framing in this movie is very. It's it's like the simplest thing you could like do. There's a lot of boring medium shots of people. It does. It almost has that feeling of just a guy with like his phone or something, just like getting mm. shots. And the ending scene where you have the the general is like arguing with the uh, the main character of the movie, who I don't know his name because I don't care. Um, <laughs> in the shot reverse <laughs> shot, literally, the like clouds went by and they just kept rolling. Mm. Just wait for the clouds to leave so the. So when I go from this shoulder to that shoulder, the, the f-stop doesn't drop, like, by three. Hey. It was horrible. Does that also yeah. throw off continuity because of angle changes? Yes. They, they might have been on a tight schedule here. The producers, guys giving all the money to make this absolute blockbuster masterpiece, they only had so much time. They have it. schedules. What's wrong with only 14 days? That's not a funny note. Oh. This movie took five years to make. It started in 2011 to get casting, to get people to agree to join it. <laughs> it's like, I'll give you pizza. I'm in. Th that's probably Yo, what That's how you get actors, man. You say, like, when you're doing, like, you know, independent stuff. Yeah, I just want to say, uh, <laughs> for the record, that uh, overtly critical um, film show, the crew here, we do not support um, Little Caesars Pizza. Um, it is the worst shit on earth. And if you feed your your, your crew and actors <laughs> the man with which will Little come Caesars, uh, uh, you're you're a bad person. It didn't help our noir shoot, but I spent like seventy dollars on you fuckers. We could have talked about the Batman. Yeah, why did we do it just law? Uh, because he didn't did, want to. He was too why tired. Why didn't we do? Because we just got back from. You were break. so tired. You were like, oh, really this is why we need a mobile saw. set.
There's a couple just really dumb scenes. Like, there's some, like, party that's going on, some outdoor gathering. And they literally say, like, a large gathering of people. Right. And then it says, okay. a large gathering of people, Ohio. I have, I have some questions to bring up. First off, you know, just the electric, the magic electric guitar that doesn't need power or an amp to play, you know. And you can clearly hear it. Same with the bass. Oh, the percussion that isn't there, too. <laughs> I kind of stopped questioning the logic of the movie at, at that point. Um, and I was just all along for the ride. That's fair. It's just, uh, you know, I did. I did like the the really amazing character development, where the. <laughs> what? what which Let one? me finish. Which what one? character development? I did love the really strong character development where the president meets the mayor, and the mayor needs to get his damn ratings up. And in the moment of crisis, he's concerned about it about his ratings. Just wanted to say there was good character development there. You did mm. point that out now that I think about I did. It. That character lasted all of two scenes. Oh yeah, he got fucking blown up! <laughs> he gets blown up by the fucking dumbass soldiers! You know who else accidentally does something stupid? Corwin. <laughs> He's guessing off screen, I swear it's not me. Yeah. I I'm, sorry. Never. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you got stupid. Oh. Uh, we all, all three of us, have seen Corwin do many things that just <laughs> were like, how? God damn it. He's gotten better, but at dinner, he knocks over his cup a lot. He likes to punch it. That doesn't happen in a lot. He a likes while, it. So. Yeah, he had to have done I've a gotten better. Doing your daily morning uh, spray hands with butter sort of tactic to make a, the day go by easier. Yeah. You know, I always thought that spraying my hands with butter would, like, help, but, you know, I guess you shouldn't <laughs> let your homies butter your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Some of, like, the close-ups of, of the Sloppy Joe were, like, these really disgusting shots of, like, someone's food in their kitchen. Somebody thought it was, I think the musician thought it was a really good idea to throw an unplugged extinction cord at the he monster. Says, let's see what 125 volt show 120. 125 volts looks like. He throws it at it and then we just cut to like someone's kitchen where they just throw an extension cord on like oatmeal. It's like <laughs> and I'm like, "Ew, what the <laughs> fuck was that?" It's like in, a, in our other favorite movie, um, The Amazing Bulk, where we have a, a an out of nowhere cutscene oh, of a man God. painted purple for a close up. Somewhere there is footage of it's of us exists. watching the, ball. the amazing ball. There's no, there's reaction. You know what? Oh my that god! If this someday. video ever gets ten thousand lights, we release it. Sometimes you should just stop making your movie. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, 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 no. Okay. What an intriguing no, no, lesson. No. My real, my real lesson is sometimes, uh, sometimes just have fun. You know. We have such this idea in our society that like art is like this thing you got to get good at and art should be appreciated only if it's a good or like high level and like you know if you want to make a movie with your friends go make a movie with your friends this is more fun to watch than some like fucking hollywood garbage i agree that like it's this mass-produced studio crap it's like one guy with a bunch of like his friends probably and family just making a movie and damn it's fun and put more money into the poster than the movie what kind of exactly. lesson is that? What are you, the Joker? Dan, why don't you tell us a lot about the audio of this this movie? Like, you know, like the 40% of this movie where they're just shooting it and it does nothing? Yeah. Cause, you know, because it's Manwich and it's their bullets and it, you, you expect it to do something, but it doesn't. They're just like free to use shotgun sounds. You can find like the exact same sound from like Call of Duty. <laughs> when the military general just comes up with like, w w to me, like what is, what is the worst plan ever to try and defeat this thing by eating it and it just I'm like, sorry. It, I'm that's, sorry. That's yeah. Was that American. someone's phone vibrating or something? This is a lot of the squeakiest fucking fart. Oh, that was my phone. Oh. I can't eat this man, which you have to. You have to. It's like this guy actually like lost a loved one or like a friend speed eating and yet he's gonna go and do this. It's like, which they give a flashback but it's only audio. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's only audio. It's great. And then his, his whole, his like wife's whole thing in the movie is like, no, don't. Don't. She says the same line like five times. Like, no, I have to. You said like that was the speed eater's wife. It actually, dead ass just felt like his mom. Oh, could have been. He looked it, like it a really fucking like, 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 World of like Warcraft like person. Like, <laughs> when we have Warcraft. two people here with neck beards at the table, I do you not cannot have neck talk. Beard. You're right. You've got the chin strap. Yeah. This motherfucker has. <laughs> Joey has the worst neck beard for our Spotify listeners. This movie uh, ends with the third act walk off into the sunset. 
Um, and a very weird camera move, like a jib up. It's really shit. I didn't even see a sunset. But, but it, it ends on a high note. You know, in America, you just eat your problems. My 600-pound life. <laughs> Okay, I immediately called how they were going to kill this fucker. Right, from that's the true. You well, predicted no, I'll this. give the movie credit. It was a little more complicated than that, because I thought it's like, oh, there's going to be onions, that's going to kill him. No, it wasn't quite that stupid. They were like, oh, the onions aren't enough, and I'm like, oh, the stomach acid, we have to eat it. I thought it was a good plot point. And wasn't... And the competitive eater was, like, allergic to onions, Yeah, too. that never so really comes back, ones, yeah. really. No. Like, he's fine at the end. Oh, and uh, Rick Moranis sacrifices himself, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, legless guy. I like that we've just agreed to call him Rick Moranis. Yeah. Who the hell is Rick Moranis? It's clearly a story about America, um, the space race, um, f uh, overeating. It says a lot about realism. I should have written that down. Which is, you know, realism is of course the uh, the philosophical study of real, um, because not what is real, real. Is anybody gonna give a counterpoint to? There's a famous counterpoint to realism. Yeah, uh, can I step in and say, well, if, if the movie isn't good, you can practically just say it never really existed to begin with. And that's where I come in with falsidology. Um, I am a falsidologist. Yeah, you're 100%. one of them. Yeah, I'm one of them. You guys hate me for it. I'm sorry. That brings a full circle. You just said them the movie at the start. Right, so yeah. I'm... I'm I think I was going to say there's a, a real feminist and real assist <coughs> angle you can take for this movie. Um, and um, I like that his wife just gets fucking eaten by him. <laughs> I forgot. I, <laughs> nice I, feminist still, angle there, man. You're still Joe. Tom Hanks. This entire line about she fucking sold her body to Tom Hanks for hundred fifty dollars. No, he was like, "I we will not do that for a hundred. You said I was worth a hundred fifty. Yeah, <laughs> Joe is just a stand-up husband. What in the city, they they put they have like the the creature on the ground, and it kind of they added so much drop shadow to it. It looked like it was floating. It didn't even look like it was on the ground. But to to be fair, I uh, I couldn't tell you how they did any of the the monster effects. Um, I really like how, in, remember in Clockwork Orange, you mentioned the motif of the eye. They brilliantly put one eye on the monster. That's true. Wow. Um, my favorite moment of the movie, oh. hands down, was the, the power move to um, hit him with all those volts of electricity and just throwing your extension cord uh, in a bowl of oatmeal and getting that as a shot <laughs> and putting it in your movie. All right, Dan, what's your favorite moment? <laughs> <laughs> the funniest moment, I honestly think, was when the band was playing the instruments without the need of power or anything, and the song made no sense as it was like a happy-go-lucky song, as this giant man, which was murdering all these children, and they're running away. It's like, tell my mom I love her. Sucker. I really like the part where uh, Dr. Chang licked the skull. I forgot Stop. We gotta talk about Dr. Chang for a little bit more. Yeah. Dr. Chang, he makes this case his life. <gasps> He is using protractors to track its movements. Walking a compass right. just across a textbook. Yeah, I know. It was like a map of like, I think it was like Arkansas or something. It was just, it was, like, it was some, some Probably state. Ohio, because that's where the oh, movie's okay. set. They're all the fucking remember. same. Chang is a great guy. He's just, uh, he's looking at these disintegrated bodies, including one of a great, of a nice redneck. And, but he looks at um, this one disintegrated body that was eaten by Sloppy Joe, I think it was the girl, the, the dead little 10 year old. Um, it was. And he's trying to find this residue on it. Um, and he just like licks, the, he just licks he the just skull. Licks the skull, the, the worst prop skull I have ever seen. Like, it, it, it's so bad. It wasn't just the prop though, it was the yeah. way he did it. Um, like, he, and it was vile, he was like. All around the skull. You got a real nice, nice, right. you got his tongue right up in there. Yeah, and, the and for and the uh, YouTube listeners, that's a special something you don't get to see me do every day. I don't usually listen to YouTube videos, and I usually watch them. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing I kind of thought about when you said we have to talk about that. Why are you I'm, whispering to me? I don't know. I'm just being quiet now because. I hate you, empty man. Go away. To close this thing off, do we have any more. Things to read. Well, I think we could we could end off with. Um, you guys, do you guys have something to talk about? It, it's, it's relating to me. 
the great chicken sandwich debate. Oh my god. It is easily Popeyes. Oh. Your answer was different last time. Yeah, my one my answer was Wendy's, I think. I have nothing to say to you. Alright. <laughs> what no, listen. There is something about the Popeye's chicken sandwich. It's very similar to the Burger King one, but I think it does something better. It's fucking greasy and disgusting, and it's so good. But the Wendy's, Wendy's one is, is actually it, super hot and comes with really thick pickles like Burger Fuck King. the spicy uh, though. You, you, I'll admit that. How many sponsorships have we done in this episode so far? We made a lot of money from We did Kroger, uh, uh, Popeye's, B&M. Oreo Cakesters. B&M. I said Yeah, B&M. yeah. Two week <laughs> Nice job. <laughs> this man, last night, uh, at the at time we were recording this, last night, was looking over, he actually does have a girlfriend, looking over Georgia houses and apartments and seeing which one's the best match for his, <laughs> his money. I was doing this. <laughs> this is April it? Fools. We all got April Fooled. Everybody that made the movie got April Fooled. Yeah, you thought we were watching. And the uh, audience got April Fooled. Uh, no, Andre Rublev. Thank you. Yeah. What did you broken. say? Hold on. Oh. Okay. oh, he's gonna go. And now we you have. You fucked the light. Uh. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching this week. Uh, next week, we will actually have Andre Rublev. Andre Rublev, um, a 1960s movie that's uh, Soviet, Soviet film as well. Film. Um, so subtitles, which means uh, Joey's probably gonna hate it. Thank you for stopping in an April Fools. I hope you got pranked today. Um, and uh, the title misled you. Yeah. See you, everybody, next week. Bye.